Hey, this is Jeff McLean, and we're out here in Bearmouth, Montana. Um, and I've got my assistant Piper and horse wrangler, as well as our model, Andrew Benson, and horse liaison. And uh, we're going to be doing a sort of a Old West themed kind of dead cowboy photo shoot. Today we're just working on the background portion of this image. And, uh, and then later in the uh, future live stream, we're going to work on the foreground portion, put them together in Photoshop for the final image. So keep an eye out for that live stream. So let's get to it. Okay, so in, in this shot, I wanted to do something a little different than what I normally do. Uh, often I'm doing product photography or architectural type work. And this, I just, I had this idea with the, this a woman has shown up into town and she has a dead cowboy on the back of the horse. And that was sort of the overall concept. And I want the shot to be cinematic. Uh, I wanted it to be in uh, two, three, nine aspect ratio. Um, and kind of go for a particular like muted tone kind of look, sort of like an Old West kind of thing. Working with the Canon 5D Mark II and some Profoto Air units, um, battery powered. I've got my MacBook here set up and we're going to be shooting to Capture One Pro. Okay, you see the reason I like to use Phase One's product Capture One Pro is it's super robust when you're tethering to the computer. I mean, I've been on shoots where we shoot literally 50,000 images and Capture One handles it just fine. Uh, it has full editing capabilities, um, it has a really powerful color engine, uh, it's, I find it very easy to organize my files in it, and uh, I just, you know, prefer its overall functionality for tethered shoots. Alright, I know this is probably going to be challenging, but is there any way to get him to walk backwards? Oh, not a problem at all for <laughs> horse, that's good, stop. That's why we have Piper to work on this. And maybe an inch towards you, Piper. All right, so in, in this little bit here, uh, I'm, I'm having Piper move the horse because I'm working with an aspect ratio that's uh, 2, 3, 9 to 1, which is sort of a, it's a cinematic anamorphic lens sort of a, a crop. And I, I knew just looking through the camera, um, I needed to get the horse off to the left more. So that's why I'm moving uh, Poco the horse. That's good there. Get yourself into position, Andrew. That looks great. Piper, you can just hang there because I can use the, the miracle of Photoshop to remove you. I was hoping you'd say that. Well, good. I'm going to turn it off for a second. I'm just going to knock off a, a non-strobe shot of my baseline. So with a non-strobe shot, typically when I'm working, uh, whether I'm in studio or on location, I generally want to see, particularly in an, a shot with a lot of ambient light, and that's my main thing, I want to get that as sort of my baseline. I want to see what the ambient light's doing before I start throwing a bunch of lights in there. In this case, I was just using the one light for fill, but I wanted to first start with an ambient exposure and then introduce one light at a time. And that's generally how I work, whether I'm on location or in the studio. So, in this kit, this is uh, my little special effects makeup kit. I've got uh, some stage blood here. It's mint flavored. Um, I've got some various helpful aids here, some sponges, various uh, flesh tone makeup, little scissors so that if I'm working with uh, making any cuts, uh, they're blunt tipped so that I don't uh, harm the person that I'm working with. Um, you know, like a little spatula palette thing to help me with some of this uh, wound filler, just this j jelly material that's kind of nasty and uh, helps the wounds to look more realistic. And then a couple of different uh, sets of makeup here. Um, one for bruising and one for more bloody gore type stuff. And uh, a little liquid latex, I'll, I'll probably employ that later. So you might be wondering why I have all this makeup with me. Um, aside from using some of it to style Andy, our model, um, I know that in you know our future live stream, I'm going to need some of these other tools for the other part of the shot. So that's why I have some of that with me. I got my bucket here, which just helps me kind of wet Andy down uh, so that the back of him looks, you know, more bloody. You know, various comfort things, uh, bug dope and sunblock. I got my little camera bag here. I didn't really need to bring a whole lot. I got my, my batteries and charger, a backup cable, because it's almost always the cable that uh, seems to go down on a shoot, that $15 or $20 cable. We got our Profoto strobes here with some backup charged batteries ready to go. I've got some gel material here, ND, magentas, CTO, CTB, um, orange and blue filter basically. I've got some cinefoil, 
I've got a number of different clamps. I usually have a lot more stuff in this case, but I knew I was gonna be walking up this little hill here and didn't wanna bring, you know, overkill. So the brand of lights I'm using on this shoot are the Profoto B1X battery powered units. Uh, they're awesome. Um, they can, they can hand, they're really rugged and uh, have beautiful light that comes out of them. I also have this grip kit that has a whole bunch of stuff in it um, from A clamps, spring clamps, Cardellini clamps. Um, I usually have tons of different size clamps with me. I bring Cinefoil, which is like this uh, tin foil that's black and opaque and I can wrap it around light heads or use it to go bow off light. Uh, sometimes I might use it as a, a flare card if I'm getting light on my lens, uh, things like that. And I also bring a little orange gardening pad in that case uh, because sometimes I have to get down on my knees uh, for a low angled shot and having just a little bit of padding like that can really help save your knees. Some cold, non-alcoholic beverages uh, to keep the crew happy. The most important thing right here is Pirate's Booty for sustenance. What can I say? I like snacks. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit more styling on Andy. I'm gonna bloody you up some more. Oh, I'm stuck to it. I'm gonna hit some freshies here. Ooh, it's dripping on me now. It's good though, because it should look a little, a little dried. So I actually did some research into this. I wanted to find a fake blood that wouldn't stain clothing, uh, but more importantly, I didn't want it to stain Andy's skin since I was putting it all over his head and hands and things like that. Um, and I found this product uh, by Ben Nye, and it's, and it's a stage blood. And it's interesting because um, it's basically just cornstarch and tastes a little minty And uh, in case you, you know, get it in your mouth. You know, I basically am going with mostly an ambient light exposure, uh, nice and backlit with some fill light coming from the pro photo to just fill in some of the shadows, which just gives me a meteor histogram. Um, so that when I get it into post-production, I'm not, I'm not battling that. I don't have, you know, shadows that are blocking up on me, but it's also not like, I don't want it to look like it's been filled with a strobe light, just a real subtle kiss of light, just to kind of fill in some of the shadows. And uh, then the rest of it is, you know, styling of uh, Andy here, you know, with some fake blood and some bullet holes, some real bullet holes. Probably mind you. And then uh, the expertise of our horse wrangler Piper here, managing Poco the horse back and forth, uh, kind of getting him into position where I want him in the, in the overall crop. So I chose Piper here as my assistant uh, for two reasons. She was, is a graduate of our professional intensive program, so I was confident that she knew what I needed her to know um, to help me as an assistant uh, on the photo end of things but also because she's a horse person. She has experience working with horses, and, and I don't. And I needed somebody there that could uh, not only help me kind of get the, the shot set up in the beginning, but also help with Poco the horse. And so she was really valuable in that way. And then, you know, as far as what I'm seeing on screen, just looking at my histogram, making sure I'm getting a lot of information in there. I'm not too worried about some of the highlights blowing out here, um, just because that's, you know, some of the, the nature of it. I can recover some of it, but you know, it's a nice sunny look for uh, for this. So here I have my laptop sitting on a Tether Tools Aero Traveler tabletop and it's got a Manfrotto camera plate on the bottom that hooks into a tripod head that's on my Manfrotto video legs. Um, and it just makes it easy when I go on location to set up, set things up. And the laptop's sitting inside a think tank tent which helps to block out all the ambient light so I can really see what's happening on the screen. And um, and I'm okay with it, you know, I can I can come in and recover a little bit of that with my high, highlight slider, but generally I'm, I'm okay with some of the blown out areas. So if I was bringing this shot to print on a large commercial project, I would be much more concerned about the highlights on the main, on, on Poco's main. Um, but, you know, the nature of the shoot, I know it's, you know, it's not some huge client and we're doing it really just here as a sort of a personal project. Um, so I was willing to let some of that brightness go and I could pull some of it back with the highlight slider. But if I was doing this on a larger project, I'd probably be flying a, a quarter stop silk over the whole scene so that I could maintain some of the dot in the highlight areas. I'm going for this kind of time of day and I like a little bit of the lens flare that's happening in the scene as well. I'm taking some of the saturation down overall um, to give it a, kind of a muted sort of look. Um, I'll probably, you know, kick up the contrast a little bit and then in the final image, I'm, I'm generally going to be having, uh, you know, Piper's not going to be in there, but 
the next component of the image is going to uh, be in the foreground here of this. So, If you like this video, hit the thumbs up sign. If you don't like the video, hit the thumbs down. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. We'll go back to you. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel for more of this great content, you can hit the subscribe button down there or up there. And there's links to this equipment that was used down below. Thanks for watching.